Welcome back to the channel. As you can see, today we've got Adele that's trying to get frisky with us. She'll be a winking at us. What you are seeing right here is what is commonly called a flash code. In the days of old, we would call this a beep code because instead of the light flashing, it would be beeping, beep, beep, beep from the PC speaker. And that particular beep code is three embers and a white. One, two, three. One. One, two, three. One. So that is a code three. For most PCs, including this Dell here, you can Google search up the whole list of codes. But in this case, that most likely is indicating a dead CMOS battery. And then when you get the thing booted up, you'll come up with an error message. It looks probably something a lot like this. It says, hey, the date's not set. We got an invalid configuration. What's going on, my guy? Basically, it's telling you that the CMOS settings have vanished. CMOS is an acronym that doesn't really apply to anything that we're going to be doing. It's something or another, metal oxide, semiconductor, something like that, I think. What it really is, is a group of settings on a little itty bitty RAM chip that a battery inside the PC keeps alive when it's powered off. So according to our flashing light on the front and the error messages it's giving us, that battery has died. So at this screen, I'm just gonna go ahead and hit continue and it will boot up like normal from here, but it's gonna have that flashing light every time you use it and you'll get that error message, I think pretty much every time you turn it on. So now we just need to get that battery replaced. To do that, the first thing you're gonna need is some batteries. These happen to be 2032 size. That's what this here Dell needs. This is a Dell 3880, by the way. Should be the same for Dell 3891, Dell 3888, a whole bunch of different models. I suspect most Dells built, we'll say from 2020 forward, probably use a 2032. In this case, I went for name brand, quote unquote, kind of expensive ones, because I don't want to do this job again. This machine is only about two years old. And I have heard reports from other people out in the world that theirs have already failed too. I don't know if it's just a quirk of this computer or if some of us have better luck than others or what. But this guy being that it was a project PC for YouTube would pretty much come up here on the bench about once a month. And when the project was over, it would go off in the corner for, you know, the next couple of weeks or whatever, normally. So it didn't spend a whole lot of time plugged in. So it may be relying on that battery a little more than you might expect. All that said, replacing it should not be a huge deal. First thing we're going to need to do is take this case side off, which can be done very simply by removing the thumb screws on the back of it. This guy here, this guy down here. If you've never had your case side off, these will be kind of tight. You'll need a screwdriver to do it. Just pull back about an inch and it'll just kind of come off to the side. Now we're in. And now that we are in, our CMOS battery is that shiny little coin cell duder right there. Placing it really shouldn't be any terribly huge deal. I just have a small precision screwdriver here. And I've just kind of got that tab flipped back. Now she's gonna come, this is a magnet on a stick, just make my life a little easier. Don't normally like using magnets in computers, but this has no mechanical hard drive. But there you can see our failure. Lithium three volt, 2032 by a company I've never heard of. Here I've got our bunny cells. And the only way I could find these was with this little child proof icon on them, which means they're ultra annoying to open. So as you can see, I've got an X-Acto knife razor blade here so I can extract one from the back of this packaging. And good grief, they are hard to open. So I guess if you have kids that are prone to eating batteries because they're small monsters, that's the brand of battery to buy. Anyway, putting it back in should not be any big deal. It's just gonna be just like we took the old one out. I'm just gonna kind of cock it up on an edge and slip it in and snap it down. And just so my giant meat hook is out of the way so you can maybe see a little easier, I'll use the screwdriver without a bit. And there it is. Nice and secure and ready for more service. Let's get the thing booted back up and see if we still have BIOS errors we need to fix. So as soon as I turned it on, it powered itself up. It actually went through a couple of power cycles, but I never hit the power button. I would say it settled down after about 45 seconds, maybe a minute. And now you can see we just still have a steady power state light, which is what you would want to see. And the BIOS screen came up with all the same errors I had last time. This time I just went into BIOS settings and I'm not gonna change anything. I'm just gonna come down here and hit exit. And upon doing so, you can see that it is rebooting. And here she is happily rebooted. I'm gonna go ahead and shut it down. And here it is shut down and happy and plugged in. I'm gonna go ahead and boot it again. You can see we don't have any strange Das Blinken lights in and it appears to be booting normally. Yep, everything looking good. And there you have it, one replaced CMOS battery.
This is a job that pretty much anybody out there can do. I will link the helpful tools in the description, so the batteries and the mini screwdriver. If you have any questions or anything, be sure to comment below. And as always, I appreciate you guys stopping in for this video. We'll catch you on the next one.